So a couple of years ago, I bought an iPad 6, which is the cheapest model with support for the Apple Pencil. And so far, it has been a very useful device, uh, both for studying, drawing, brainstorming, and in general, everything that involves sketching with the pencil. But as a developer, I always wondered, can I actually code something on this thing? And the answer in the past was kind of no, in the sense that you could set up a remote server and then SSH into it and open Vim, for example, but the experience was limited to it and of course, not very good. So recently things changed uh, thanks to GitHub Code Spaces, which uh, if you don't know it already, basically allows you to open a full-fledged VS Code editor in your web browser. It means that we can also open it in Safari, in the iPad, and try to come up with something useful. So this video is basically an experiment to see how well it works on the basic model of iPad. So without further ado, let's get started with the video. A little word of notice, before GitHub Code Spaces, there were already some solutions such as CodeServer or Gitpod, and I'm going to talk about them in detail later in the video. So stick around if you're interested. So to make the development experience easier, I'm going to use a Bluetooth keyboard, then a mouse, but because the mouse is not Bluetooth, I'm going to use a USB adapter I had for the iPad, and then of course, I'll need an iPad. I'm going to connect everything together so I'll have both a mouse and a keyboard. So I decided to keep things simple for this example. For that reason, I wanted to modify the static website of Espenso, one of my projects in particular. I wanted to add this section right here that you can already see. And because the website is built with Jekyll, we'll need a Ruby environment to compile the website. And we're going to see how in the video. So of course, everything starts with the Espenso repository. I navigate to the GH pages branch in which the website resides and then code, open with code spaces and then I create a new code space because it didn't have one before. Then we wait for a while, a solid minute for VS Code to load. And as you can see, the interface looks pretty much the same as it would in the local environment. And as I always do in my local VS Code installation, the first thing I do is installing the extensions I need the most. And my favorite one is the Vim extension. After restarting the installation, we are back to the editor with Vim installed. Of course, we already have a problem as iOS does not support the escape key. And every time you press escape, you return to the home screen. Instead, you have to use the command dot shortcut, which has the same effect as the escape key. Then I navigate to the file I want to edit and the first thing I notice is that the scroll wheel of the mouse does not work, whereas the scroll bar on the side does. So I make the necessary edits and I'm now ready to compile a website using a terminal. So I open a terminal from the menu and then I check the git status just to make sure that the edits were saved and then I call bundler install which is needed to install all the required Ruby dependencies. So I'm then ready to serve the website using Jekyll to make sure that the changes look as expected. And therefore I call bundler exec Jekyll server. So one of the great features about GitHub code spaces is that when you open a local port, for example, the one that the bundler serve command does open, you can forward that port to the outside internet and therefore be able to access that local port from anywhere in the world, which is necessary because the code is actually running not in your computer, but in a remote container. So when you bind a new local port, you will see a pop-up appear prompting to open the forwarded port in the browser. And after a while, you will see the forwarded port in your web browser. And if we navigate in the page that we just edited, the changes, as you can see, look as expected. I then head back to the terminal. I check the status, I add all the files, and then finally commit and push. I finally check that the actual website reflect the changes we just did. And as you can see, the changes are in there. Finally, I close the code spaces because I'm done with it. So I click the GitHub logo and 
here's the list of my open code spaces. I select delete code space and finally I confirm. So to sum up, what are the advantages of this setup? Well, first of all, you can code anywhere you want in basically any language. Of course, uh, you are mostly limited to the ones that you can run in the web or terminal because, uh, for example, for Android or iOS or desktop development, you don't have access to the actual device. You only have a terminal which is connected to the internet. So again, Android, iOS and desktop development won't be really suited for this setup. If you use it from the iPad, then your setup is super portable, even more than using a notebook. And because it integrates so well with GitHub compared to other solutions, collaboration is definitely much easier. But of course, this is not without drawbacks. First of all, the experience, at least on my low-end iPad, is far from good. I mean, the interface is clumsy, some of the UI is hidden when using the keyboard and the responsiveness itself is far from perfect. I'm very sure that even with a low-end laptop, you will be better off developing. Then of course, you will need a decent internet connection to use GitHub Code Spaces, but I can argue that for most development things, you need internet anyway, because you either have to download packages or you the documentation. So you need internet anyway, but in this case, you need a decent connection. Otherwise, you will get a very bad experience. Word of notice, if you are using the Vim extension on VS Code on the iPad, it doesn't work very well at all. The escape button doesn't work because iOS doesn't support that key. So you will have to use command dot instead. So if you are interested and you want to try it out, you have to join the waitlist, which is a pretty simple operation. Then after a few days, they will give you access for free to GitHub Code Spaces. As of now, the service is totally free, but then when the beta will end, we will see the actual prices, which are yet to be decided. The documentation describes some prices you may expect, which depends on the actual machine you're developing and how powerful it is, of course, but those are only for reference. And moreover, I'm pretty sure that they will offer a free tier for open source project as they do for most of their services, such as actions or uh, repositories in general. So let's talk a bit about the alternatives. The first one is Code Server, which basically allows you to do the same thing, but uh, with self hosting. So you will need to find a server in the cloud and pay it by yourself. And then you can install this code server and do the same thing from the browser. It has a cost and it's more difficult to get started because you will need to set up all the environment. Another very similar solution to GitHub Code Spaces is called the Gitpod, which is pretty much the same. It is less integrated with GitHub because it's an external product, but they offer a reasonably generous free tier with 50 free hours per month. And then of course, uh, you can pay more based on features and performance that you need. All right, so that was all for this video. I really hope you liked it. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel and liking the video because it really helps. And if you have any question, please leave a comment below and I hope to see you in the next video.